Sonny. Every year, someone comes out of this looking like a donkey. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good, because tomorrow I got a feeling it could be you if you don't make this deal. Can we talk football? We can always talk football. I just want the team that I want, one time. You're not going to believe what's happening. You make this deal right now, say it with me. An absolute stutter. Okay, screw it. No more offer. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, everybody. He's Sonny Weaver Jr. She's Allie. He's owner Anthony Molina. I'm Coach Pe No, I'm not. I'm Fonte Mack, the number one overall pick in the 2014 draft linebacker out of the Ohio State University. Baby, this ain't really draft day, although we're really close, but it is Vikings Report with Drew, Ted, and Chris. Boys, how are you? We're like so close to the NFL draft. I'm trying very hard not to completely lose my shit on all three of you right now, but you're not making it easy. We're right around the corner. We've got our last position tonight. Yes, thank you for supporting our show. We're getting going here tonight, and I'm doing great. How about you, Chris? I am doing all right, folks. It's uh, good to be back for my uh, third consecutive show, which uh, we're getting close to a record here, I think. <laughs> so it, it's draft week, kids. So, you know, this is, uh, this is what we've been waiting for for, for months. Draft is on Thursday. Say it with me, you pancake-eating mother. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Say it with me, you pancake-eating mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 never mind. No, I can't finish that word. So, okay, let's look at the day Sonny Weaver Jr. had on that particular draft. Realistic. Day. Finds out his girlfriend's pregnant the night before. His mom shows up about an hour before the draft and says, hey, let's spread your dad's ashes out over on the practice field. Hates his coach. <laughs> doesn't tell him about the like two or three trades he's made. Gets fleeced. To move up to one overall, drafts a dude he could have picked at seven. You son of a... I need five minutes, and then you can fire me. And then, I don't know, makes two or three more trades and ends up looking like a genius. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's kind of a kind of a hokey movie, but I, I enjoyed it. I, I kind of like the movie. It'll never happen like that, but it made for a good, like, it worked good in the movie, I thought. It worked good in the movie. I mean, you know, first of all, the... Uh... The projected number one overall pick is a quarterback out of Wisconsin, so we know we're in fantasy land <laughs> as soon as the movie kicks off. And, and then, I mean, you know, that dude from Jacksonville, you know, got fired as soon as he got back to the office. He got fired before day two of the draft because you're not trade number six for three second rounders just because you're no. panicking or whatever. I mean, it it's a good movie for what it is. I mean, it was, you know, for, for people who, like, know how some of this stuff works it's, it's like whenever people who are in the military watch military movies you're like yeah that that stuff doesn't work like that 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 doesn't go like that at all <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because i saw on on youtube i watched a thing it with it, tom telesco i think he's the chargers gm they interviewed him while he was watching draft day and, and basically said hey so how much of this stuff <laughs> is kind of dumb and how much of this is kind of real and you know you remember in their draft room they had their their draft board Mm -hmm. And and he's like he's like hey, that that's their that's their draft board. They only got like two guys in each position. That's the worst draft board I've ever seen. If you're gonna have a movie about draft day, you think you would like really like get some real draft boards? There's like one player in each round for each position. That'd be tough. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, and then they then they made the trade up for for Bo Callahan, and and he said so. So you trade up for the first overall, and and you haven't done your homework on him, and now you decide on draft day, the morning right. of the draft. After now you're going to start doing your homework About the on party him. Come on, and all I, that. I, no, his teammates went to the party. But he said the guy that was the security guy pulling up that kind of information. That's very realistic. He said, like, yeah, yeah, nobody went to the guy's birthday party. Ooh, I wouldn't have drafted him. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. That's good information to have right there. I mean, so some of the stuff he's like, yeah, that's that's kind of, ooh, yeah. Oh, so they so they still traded for him? I mean, it's actually kind of fun to watch. Kind of fun to watch the interview. Pause it for a second. Does every security director have an office downstairs with like cinder block walls with no windows? Seriously, look at this guy's like down in the dungeon. Same thing here. I know. Same with Bill Stetson. He's downstairs, no windows. Anyways, you but anyway, who yeah, the running so. back was in that movie? No, Arian no. Foster. That was the, the Arian Foster Texans running back. Yeah, I man, had no Texas idea. Guy. Remember, he's pretty good for like three years. Yeah, top fantasy. I had him on my fantasy team one year. He did pretty well. I did not know he played that part. So, wow, wow me neither. 
unrealistic about the draft and also if you get Jennifer Garner in a in a isolated storeroom twice and you do nothing, I'd ex- right. I'd, yeah. I'd fire him. I expect more out of a GM. If I get Jennifer Garner alone in a room, I'm not talking about my feelings. Can we talk football? We can always talk football. No, <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm just not. But I mean, yeah, I I know she works for the team, but like the thing with the the thing with the mom showing up for the the spreading of the ashes or whatever, I would have to imagine that you know when it gets to be draft week, like the 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 rest of the family is like going on vacation, uh, the the wife, the kids, the the family, whatever, because you have no distractions that week because you yeah. are focused on you know doing the draft. I mean, you're you're not sitting there. All right, we're on the clock. You're not sitting there at your desk in your office going. Damn, what do I do? Because you, you know, you know what you're gonna do by that point. Yeah. Although mom calling him up and said, You sold a cow for magic beans. That's something like a mom that's been in football for fifty years right. would do. You sold a cow for magic bean. Way to go, yeah. son. You sold a cow <laughs> for magic bean. Way to go. Good job. Yeah, your dad, your dead father that you fired is really proud of you right now. <laughs> Positive <laughs> uplifting moment there. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> anyway, we've got a great show. It's our last show before the draft. We are not going to have a studio show next week because we are going to have a, our live draft show. I'd like to say it's our third annual live draft show. Sadly, we could be on the air last year. Uh, I had a family funeral to go to last year. But we will be on the air Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Central Time, about a half hour before the traditional booing of Roger Goodell, as Chris so aptly put it, <laughs> last week commences. And then we will be on live the following Monday after the draft time to be determined we'll let you know during the live draft show about what time that'll be to kind of recap how the vikings did over the weekend as always head on over to purple pain forums that's purplepainforums.com your great community and home for minnesota vikings talk if you're sick of social media be it facebook twitter or whatever social media site you go to for your vikings news purple pain forums great site great community of vikings fans head on over to daily norseman chris's site the founder purveyor uh, and head blogger. He founded the site back in 2006. It's still going strong. Get your Vikings news there if uh, if you need to go find out what's up, the latest and greatest for, hey. for, for the Minnesota Vikings. Yes, That's sir. Another fake part of that movie. Goodell came out there cheering. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, yes. Come on. I yeah, wanted to that, mention that. that. Yeah. Never happens. Happen. Never happens. No. So tonight we're going to talk some Vikings news, mostly draft-centric stuff. We are going to do our one and only mock draft. And just like every other single mock draft, it is going to be wildly unrealistic. It's not going to happen, but we are going to do one. 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 Yep, that's we started it. the offseason. We wait until a lot. we always wait yep. until right before the draft and we do one. And then we are going to have our final positional analysis. We are going to wrap our positional analysis segment this year. We're going to finish up with safety and trivia. Trivia returns tonight. Yeah. I am wait. fired up for that. I am too. All right. So, but before yep. that, Brewster, you got the time? Ted? Yeah. I'm cooler than you are. So why don't you fix your little problem and light this draft day candle? He's right. I want my three first round draft picks back and light this candle, you pancake eating mother. <laughs> He surely is. Trade your next three second round picks for number six overall and light this candle. With the 11th overall With the 11th pick. pick in the 2024 Four. NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select. All right, I'm cool with it. Why don't you fix your little problems and light this candle? He's right. Let's light this candle. He surely is. Light the candle. Yes. Resume the countdown. (laughs) Woo! Woo! All right. Now we're off and running. All right, so I asked you guys if we should even talk about this when we talk about Vikings news. Infamous muckraker and yellow journalist Mike Florio pretty much (laughs) pulled this out of thin air. Regarding the league tampering investigation with the Falcons regarding the Kirk Cousins signing and kind of suggested that one of the solutions could be the Falcons and the Vikings swapping first round picks. But it's been picked up by a couple of 
of national outlets. I think ESPN being one of them, Chris, I think you told me. Yep. Do you even see that as a possibility? And if it is, I would think that would make a trade up and the second part of our new segment of the Vikings wanting, really wanting to keep pick 23, their second first round pick, kind of more in play. So let's kind of tie those two pieces of, of news together. Is A, the pick swap with the Falcons realistic? And if it is, is keeping pick 23 realistic in a trade-up scenario to get what we all assume to be a quarterback if that's if that's the play for the Vikings on Thursday? I don't have the point totals for like the, the Jimmy Johnson draft chart or the updated draft chart in front of me. But I'll, I'll you know, on, it would be less costly to move from 8 to 4 than it would be from 11 to 4. I'm not sure how much less costly it would be. I still think that even if you did move up to 8 from 11, you would have to include uh, 23 in a trade up unless, I mean, unless the difference is great enough where you could do uh, this year's first at 8, uh, next year's first, and uh, whatever pick it would be and keep 23 this year. Teams are going to know if you're trying to move up for a quarterback, that increases the price of things uh, for the most part. So, yeah, I I don't think a trade up without throwing in 23 is realistic at this point. As far as whether they do the pick swap with the Falcons and the Vikings, there was some sort of uh, incident that I can't, I can't remember what it was. I think the Eagles were involved somewhere, but they didn't make the announcement for that until like a couple of hours before the draft. So there is a precedent for holding on to this uh, information until the very last minute, but yeah, we'll, we'll see if it happens. I mean, we know the tampering rules get broken all the time, but you know, if, if you have a guy standing behind a microphone going, yeah, this is what we did. Uh, we did this and it was illegal. And I mean, if you're going to have the rules, enforce the rules, do, do something. Otherwise, just don't have the rules and make it a free for all. But there is a precedent for an announcement like this happening right before the draft starts. So we'll have to see if that's actually what happens this time around. So per the Rich Hill trade value chart, which has kind of become the accepted point value in, in draft picks now, the number eight pick, which is the Falcons pick, has a value of 406 points. The Vikings pick at 11 has 300 is worth 358 points. If the Vikings were to move up to three, that's the Patriots pick. That's 514 points. The number four pick, the Arizona pick, is 491 points. So they, they'd they only have to make, if they want to go from eight to four, they'd only have to make up, what, uh, 90, blah, from go from 491 to 406. So they wouldn't even have to make up, they'd have to make up less than 90 points. But yeah. like you said, if the assumption is they're going to go for a quarterback, they would have to sweeten the pot as a so, Drew, let me pose this question to you. Do you think that this this pick swap between the Falcons and the Vikings is even possibly a thing in terms of punishment for Atlanta for, for tampering, which it kind of seems like they did, actually. My big question was, if it was a thing and it was going to happen and the swap was going to happen, wouldn't they have to have told the Vikings by now? But Chris just answered my question. If it happened last time, they didn't announce it till two hours before the draft, then that kind of shuts down. Because I was thinking, if they're going to do that, wouldn't they have announced it already? But apparently they don't. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it, it's certainly going to change what the Vikings want to do in terms of capital spent. I don't think you move up from 11 to 4 or 5 or whatever without giving that 23 up. It's almost impossible. I don't see how they're going to. Yeah, I, I don't. But think then so one thing Chris had mentioned last week, and it's been stuck in my head all week, is the fact that the Vikings didn't go after that pick. Houston did. It's starting to feel to me like they want to wait, take a quarterback, and then take another guy at 23. I think that's more of a possibility than it was two months ago when everybody's saying we're going to trade up for sure. We talked about sticking to what you want to do and their plan and Questy, and I'm going to trade up. I'm a, this is a guy I want. Go get him. I'm fine with that because at this point, I want to at least try it, even if it fails. We're never the team that tries to go out on a limb, man. Let's do it. Let's you know try to get our quarterback this year. If it fails, it fails. But I think people generally on the Vikings want to see it happen. I think Atlanta should have to switch with us. Tampering is tampering. Why, why, is there no gray area yeah. on it? Is it, Chris? Ted? Have you guys either been a, a, accused of tampering in your life? Um, yeah, with a, with a colonel's <laughs> daughter way back when I was a young airman. <laughs> and did you, in fact, tamper? Sir, I'm unaware of any such activity or operation. <clears throat> Nor would I 
be disposed to discuss such an operation if it did in fact exist, sir. I am unaware of any <laughs> such activity or operation, nor would I be at liberty to discuss it if that situation did in fact exist. That is the correct answer. Thank you. <laughs> so here's the thing. Chris, I don't remember that situation you're talking about with the Eagles. This was just last year. For the Cardinals tampering with uh, Jonathan Gannon before they hired him as the head coach, they apparently talked to him before they were supposed to when the Eagles went to the uh, NFC Championship game and stuff. They had to swap third-round picks. So Arizona had to send, I believe it was number 66 overall, to the Eagles for the 94th pick. Like I said, they announced that like literally about half an hour before the draft. So, I mean, I don't know if this is something, you know, because of how high profile it is, because of the kind of money they're talking about with Cousins, whether, you know, first round picks would be appropriate to uh, to deal with here. And, you know, like we said, if they have if you have rules, enforce the rules. Otherwise, you know, they're not rules they're just suggestions. If you're talking second or third round picks, I'd almost rather the Falcons have to forfeit or second or third round pick and give it to the Vikings because the Vikings don't have a second or right. third round pick right. Right. Now. I would rather do that it. than swap first round. Absolutely. That would make sense. And if the Vikings are still intent on moving up, that could be enough maybe to throw in and not have to sacrifice a first round pick next year. Right. Possibly. Possibly. Can you explain in a nutshell what the tampering thing was with Atlanta? So what happened is Kirk Cousins went out at the at the press conference that he had to announce his signing with the Falcons. And he talked about how the, the Falcons, you know, kind of made it happen, whatever. But he let it slip that during the legal tampering period, apparently he was in contact with the Falcons training staff about the uh, the extent of his Achilles injury and where he was in the process and that sort of thing. Now, the legal tampering period the only people that are supposed to be in contact with the teams are the agents for the players. The players themselves are not allowed to start making contact with the teams until after that legal tampering period when free agency officially, quote unquote, gets underway. But because the Falcons training staff apparently, and this, this is right out of Kirk Cousins' mouth, talked with Kirk Cousins before the actual start of free agency during that legal tampering period, that's apparently a no-no. Because, you know, maybe if Kirk hadn't said, yeah, this is where I am in the process and whatever, you know, maybe the Falcons are like, well, I don't know, maybe we're not going to give you this kind of money. But, you know, they learned it before they were supposed to, basically. Be before the actual start of free agency, the only team that was supposed to have access to Cousins' medical records was the Vikings. I mean, I don't know if his, his agent could have brought it up or whatever, but... Apparently, the issue is that the Falcons training staff talked to Cousins directly, and you're not supposed to do that. So that that's where the issue arises. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. Ted, he's already fumbled, and he hasn't even started a game for him. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a nice parting gift from uh, from Kirk Cousins if we were yeah, to, uh, to make that yeah. happen. Biggest contribution to the franchise in his entire six-year career, mm. giving us an extra draft back. So, yeah, it may not be publicly announced. I would think they might let the Vikings know and the Falcons know a day or two before it's announced, yeah. you know, like maybe the Monday, the week of the draft. But we'll see. We'll keep our eyes out in the next couple of days, see if anything comes of that. Chris, call Sonny Weaver. We'll end up with all of Atlanta's picks. All right, call him. <laughs> <laughs> and three quarterbacks. Yeah, so, so that's it. The Vikings had this past week, they had their first voluntary OTA of the offseason. One of the big pieces of nuggets of information was uh, – the progress of tight end TJ Hawkinson, who was injured late last year. He spoke to the press. They asked him about the hit that Kirby Joseph, line safety Kirby Joseph hit that resulted in his torn ACL. He said, quote, I would have much rather gone down with a concussion for two weeks than have had to deal with this for nine months. Hawkinson said he doesn't have anything against Joseph. I do, but that's neither here nor there. But blames the league and its rules for incentivizing defensive players to hit low. You could kind of tell by the way Hawkinson was was kind of parsing his words in the press conference that he didn't appreciate the hit, 
but he also understands the situation defensive players have been put in in this day and age with the way the league is kind of legislating tackling out of the NFL at this point. We haven't really talked about it this offseason, but Drew, they've also taken the hip drop tackle. It's now a 15-yard penalty if you do that. I just don't understand what the NFL is thinking. I get offense puts butts in the seats and, and causes more people to watch, but I, I really think they're watering down the product of, of the game that all three of us grew up watching. I don't understand what they're doing. The hip tackle thing is going to blow up. All the talk shows are going to be on at week one and week two. It's ridiculous. I thought the five-yard chuck rule was a ridiculous thing. They, they take stuff away from the defense. And if you're going to change a rule, you're going to change the hip tackle before the Hawkinson hit? And maybe that's what TJ was talking about. How can you look at this? That's the rule that should be changed if they're going to change one. And Chris, it looks like, based on that report, that Hawkins won't be ready for the beginning of the regular season. Chris, you answered the question first. Drew, I'll come back to you. Do you think this affects the Vikings' draft strategy in any way? I don't think so. I mean, they weren't going to be targeting a tight end in the first three rounds or anything like that. And once you get into the fourth and fifth rounds, you're kind of looking at developmental type guys anyway. I mean, they might have been looking to take a guy later on anyway. Uh, this might mean that, you know, closer to the start of camp, if there's any uh, longer tenured veterans that are out there, they might try to throw a deal with them. But no, I don't think it changes the draft strategy appreciably, no. I'm manifesting Cade Stover in the fourth, but that's just me. Drew, do you think this affects their, their draft strategy in any way, shape, or form? I think form? without Josh Oliver, it really would. I mean, it's hard to say with the draft pick because Vikings don't have a two and a three, so everything's late. Every draft guy you talk about, well, I have to get him late. You got to get this guy late because we don't have nothing in the middle. But I would say no because Josh Oliver is a good tight end. And then Munt Cake, he's still here, right? Yep, So he's I think here. they're going to rough it with those two and hope TJ comes back week eight, week nine. All righty. That's it for Vikings News this week. Again, we will be on live Thursday about 6.30 p.m. Central Time for our live draft show. Drew, Chris, me, Toonses will be in the background. Be a cast of thousands, uh, maybe even uh, three, uh, somewhere, you know, number in between there, whatever. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, <laughs> it is time for Mock Draft 1.0. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is so unrealistic, but we're going to do it anyway. So this is going to be our round-robin format. So Drew is going to have the number one overall pick. We're going to just pencil in Vontae Mack right now. <laughs> number one pick, linebacker out of the Ohio State University. Then I'll go, I'll pick number two, and then Chris will pick third, and then we'll go back to Drew, then Ted, then Chris. When we get to the Vikings pick at 11, and then again at 23, all three of us will make a Vikings selection, and we're going to stop at 23 because uh, after 23, well, uh, we don't care. Who cares? We don't, we don't uh, care. Yeah, nobody we cares. Don't care. Okay. The Bears, number one, they are going to take Caleb Williams, quarterback. All right. Caleb Williams. At number two, the Washington Commanders are going to pick quarterback Jaden Daniels out of LSU. All right. So now we're at the Patriots at number three. Uh, they are also going quarterback. They are going to take uh, Drake May. Uh, the quarterback out of North Carolina. All right, Drew, at four, the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona is taking Marvin Harrison, Jr., wide receiver. At five, God, Harbaugh has talked about offensive linemen. It's either Alt or Malik Neighbors. I'm going to go Malik Neighbors for the Chargers. Well, that's who I was going to take for the Giants at six, but that's okay because we will just go ahead and take uh, – for the New York football Giants, we will go with Rome Odunze, the wide receiver out of Washington. The offensive tackle from Oregon State, Fuega. Talisi Fuega. All right, so I'm up at eight. God, their defense is pretty terrible. I'm going to pick Dallas Turner, I think. Okay. Okay, so we are back to the Chicago Bears at nine. Uh, they are... Uh, going to address the offensive line. They will be taking Joe Alt uh, out of Notre Dame. The Jets, as their fans freak out, the Jets announced that Brock Bowers is their choice. The tight end no out way. of Georgia. <laughs> I feel like that year <laughs> oh, they took God. that one guy and everybody flipped out. Was that the Kyle Brady yeah, year? Yeah, Kyle, Kyle Brady from Penn out? State. Yeah. People were jumping out of the yeah. stands with knives running towards the front. The Jets want Brock Bowers because Aaron Rodgers is coming back and they need a tight end. They have no tight ends right now. I run to the podium 
and scream into the microphone, J.J. McCarthy, quarterback, University of the National Champion, Michigan Wolverines. Chris? I mean, if we're all if we're all doing the Vikings bid, yeah, I, I got to agree with Ted. I mean, if the if the draft falls this way, and we're not doing trades, so I mean, this is the uh, obviously trades are going to blow this thing up after about three picks. But if it were to fall this way, and McCarthy falls right into your lap, I mean, you you absolutely got to take him here. I think I would take JJ McCarthy in this instance. You know what? It, I know trades are going to screw the whole thing up, but we just did a flat out no trade draft, and pretty pretty easy to have McCarthy fall there. With the needs of, you know. I, I don't think he will. I think somebody will trade up for him. Well, probably, but just they doing will. it how we did, it seemed real yeah. realistic. A couple tackles taken, yeah. three wideouts, three quarterbacks. You know, yeah. those are usually the guys that go first. All right, so Chris, you are up at twelve. Hmm. Let's see here. I think we are at the yeah, the Denver Broncos at number twelve. The fight, you Sean Payton's. I think they are also going to address the offensive line by taking a. Uh, Alabama interior lineman J.C. Latham. The Raiders are going to select Terrian Arnold, the cornerback from Bama. I can't believe the Penn State tackle is still on the board. I, I figured they'd have gotten uh, the guy you took at seven, so I'm going to pick Alam Uyawa Fashanu. Fashanu. They would go Bowers if he was here, but he's not, so uh, we will address the cornerback position with the uh, Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. Seattle is going to take Jared Verse, Edge, nice. from Florida State. Jacksonville. Jacksonville is going to take Johnny Newton out of Illinois. Okay, so we are at Cincinnati at 18. Yep. We will make it uh, back-to-back defensive tackles here with uh, the Bengals taking Byron Murphy. Dang it, I was hoping he'd get to 23. Yeah, so was I, but... Yeah. All right, Drew, Rams up at 19. I think the Rams are going to take Cooper DeGene. The Steelers are up. Let's go with... Uh, oh, man. Let's go with Marius Mims. Tackle out of Georgia. Okay, so that was the Steelers pick. We are at uh, Miami at number 21. Uh, they will be uh, addressing some of their defensive losses and taking uh, Laitu Latu. I think that's pronounced. That's how it's pronounced. Uh, the edge guy out of UCLA. That looks to be like the first guy that, you know, kind of the big draft they fall. Yep. The Eagles are going to take Jalen Rieger at 22. <laughs> wide receiver from TCU. Let me mark that down. Uh, no, they're going to take Kool-Aid McKistry. So the Vikings are now back up on the clock at 23. Ooh. Trade down would be optimal. Sure. Yep. You know what? I'm going to pick Chop Robinson. I, I think he's your best guy on the board. Still kind of a position of need for the Vikings. All right. Uh, in the Vikings spot in this situation, I'm going to go... Uh, take a look at the other side of the ball, go back to uh, offense, and I'm going to take uh, Oregon offensive lineman Jackson, or is it Jackson Powers? Jackson Johnson? Powers Johnson. Yeah, that that's my that's my guy. We don't know how don't know what Bradbury's back is going to do from one day to the next, and I think he's in the last year of his contract anyway. So he that'd be a solid depth pick, I think. If you're not going to trade back, that would probably be the pick right there, but. I'm going to give Flores his boy and go with Sweat and get our nose tackle. Devondre Sweat? Yes, really? I would. That would be a solid pick, I think. Yeah, I think so. He goes about tree fitty. <laughs> Best nose tackle <laughs> in the draft, and we need a nose tackle to run this defense properly. At 23, I think that's a good value. That's who I would take. So I would do McCarthy and Sweat. Yep. And people will say, man, that's really a reach for the Vikings at 23. And, okay, fine, but when you consider the Vikings don't have a second or third round pick and assuming they're stuck at 23 and can't trade down, I can't argue with that pick at all. That's a good pick. I like it a lot right there. Well, two months ago, for his DUI, he was in the top 15. If we walked away in the first round with McCarthy and Sweat, I'd be happy. I'd be fired yeah. up. So that is our, our mock 1.0. Oh, my God, that's all we're we'll doing. Do another one in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Another one in 20 minutes after that. 
All right, so we we have now approached the last positional analysis segment of Vikings Report with Drew and Ted and Chris uh, for our offseason at safety. And as always, Grayson, take it away, buddy. Hey everyone, it's Ted's grandson Grayson, and now it's time for the Vikings Report offseason positional analysis segment. Hit it, Papa. He does a solid job every week. It's almost like the same thing. Yeah. It's like he never deviates. It's great. <laughs> Very consistent in his wording. All right. This week we're looking at safety. As always, we look at guys on the roster. I think we're pretty much going to skip free agents. They're not going to sign anybody between now and Thursday. I don't have any free agents written down, Ted. Yeah. No, and either. then we're going to look at Drew's big board. So right now the roster, which I think is probably one of the better positional groups on the team. They've got Cam Bynum, Lewis Seen, Theo, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty, Josh Metellus, <laughs> Harrison Smith, who's back for one more ride, and Jay Ward. And for that nickname, we just want to say we're sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> that was uh, that was for real. Theo, it's Janet, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. That's a good song. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, nasty boys. Yeah. Nasty boys don't mean a thing. Come on. Absolutely. We are on to safeties. You know, I kind of like this position group with Bynum and Seen and Tellus and the hitman coming back. I thought they played very well last year, especially with Tellus. Technically, they have him listed at safety, but your Michigan guy, Drew, plays doggone near every position, and he plays it very well. I mean, Brian Flores has him maximized his potential last year, I thought. Yes, definitely. I think Bynum, Metellus, and Harrison Smith, they know what Flores wants them to do. There's your core at safety. I'd put that core up against anybody, our safety group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I know Harrison Smith lost a little bit of speed, lost a step, but he knows where to be on the field. He knows where the secondary guys are supposed to be. He's a great leader. And if we didn't have either Metellus or Bynum, I'd say we got to move on a, a safety pretty early. And I don't think we do with those guys. Jay Ward, he's exceptional at lining up offsides and giving the other team another possession to score a touchdown. <laughs> he did it twice last season. Just exceptional at it. He did. Oh, it's exceptional. He did. He sure did. He's got a special gift for that, Jay Ward. He owes me for <laughs> sheetrock damage in my house. Jay Ward, so you might want to pay that. I mean, what an absolute imbecile to jump off sides, give Tampa Bay a new set of downs, and to get a touchdown. Not to be confused with the uh, Jay Ward who created the uh, the Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoon series. Was that Jay Ward? That was really? a guy named Jay Ward. Sure hey, was. Rocky! Frostbite Falls, Minnesota. Watch me pull, <laughs> watch me pull a ribbon into my hat. Nothing up my Almost sleeve. Almost out of you. Hey, Rocky! Press through! What? <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's a pretty good imitation there, man. I love that show so much when I was with yeah. it. It was great. All right. I think, do we all agree that they're not getting any free agents now? No. Can we just skip that part? We can. Unless it's one of those moves like a week before camp, Chris, where they get a guy to come in and play yeah. safety. Yeah, barring injury, I think they're kind of set. I think they got their two deep set right now. I think they might get a guy in the draft for depth, but let's pull up your big board, Drew Butler. What up, Rocky? There it is. Let's do a little safety intro. And as I talk about the last three years real quick before we get started on our safety board, I think it's a better safety group than last year. I got four Viking watch guys I'm going to get to on this list. Do you have any safety trivia for us? Yes, I do. But it's tied into the three things I'm going to go over right now. These are available to anybody that might want them. They're the Viking watch players for all the positions we went over since February, Ted. About 30 guys that I hope we get a couple of them off there. Now, the Drew Viking Watch guys, you got to remember, these aren't the top guys from every position. I kind of factor in what picks we have, where we're at, the situation that the Vikings are facing with no second and third round. So a lot of these guys are mid-round guys. So when people see this list and go, oh, there's much better players at that position, well, you have to factor in the Vikings aren't going to get them. You know how that goes. We're going to go through 21, 2022, 2023, and... I'll give you the information, and you guys will answer the trivia question. 2021, there was 21 safeties taken, including our own Cam Bynum from Cal. the Philippines. That's right. Do you know what the team was in the Philippines? Um, the Luzon Lightning Raiders. No, no. It was the Manila Folders. Okay. Oh. <laughs> None were taken in round one. Dolphins took the first safety off the board at pick 36 overall. And your first trivia question is, who was that? Was that uh, Javon Holland? 
Jeez, look at that poll. <laughs> there is no limit to the amount of meaningless BS that is floating around in my head. You know, in the 2021 and 2023, there wasn't a safety taken in the first round of either of those drafts. Very weird position draft-wise. In 2022, there's three taken in the first round. So that's how weird it can be with safety. 19 taken, three in the first round. First taken was a safety out of Notre Dame. And in 2023, there was 19 taken, including Jay Ward of the Vikings in the fourth round from LSU. None in round one, once again. The first off the board, pick 45. Can you believe that? 45 picks into an NFL draft to get to the first safety. Safety is kind of, I don't want to say it's becoming as devalued as, as running back is, but it, it kind of is. I mean, you know, everybody talks about Kyle Hamilton and the Lewis Seen pick and Quasi Adolfo Mensa's first draft, but safety is kind of like a junk bond position in the NFL now. I, I mean, mm-hmm. like not a lot of people put a lot of stock in the safety position. It, it's corner and edge rushers on defense now. Safeties are run support guys or deep cover guys, I, and most people view those positions as fairly fungible positions, much like running back. Now. Yeah. People that are still going on about the Kyle Hamilton and scene picks from two years ago, shut up because nobody cared about the position in 2022 and now you're still going on about it. So like, plus well, if you research, if care. you research safeties and you listen to the defensive coordinators and the, what they want to do, a lot of guys are looking at linebacker slash safety. They're making those linebacker yeah. safeties. Dax Hill, he played a little linebacker at Michigan, and he got drafted as a safety, but you know what I mean? That's also depleting the pure safety. No, They're not really a pure safety position anymore. There won't be. There'll be a strong safety, always, but there won't be a free safety. I think the free safety is going to evolve into a whole other position. But the first one taken at pick 45 was from Alabama. Oh, uh, Branch. Brian Branch. Yeah. In the last three complete drafts, there's been three Safety's taken in the round one, in round one. Wow. And mm-hmm. eight in round two. And all in 2022. Yes. Yep. Yes. For a total of, if you count rounds one and two, there's been 11 taken in the last three drafts in those two rounds. So people are grabbing them late. Well, and looking at your big board, you don't have any first round projections. No, I don't. First off, before we get to these Viking guys, I wanted to say that Cooper DeGene, who we did last week, who was on, I think, fourth on my uh, corner board for Iowa. He would be number one safety on, if I was putting him on the safety board. So I wanted to clear that up before my list goes out there. And Anthony Tolleson calls me and says, where's Cooper to <laughs> uh, He's on my corner board. But if he was a safety, he'd be the first guy taken. I think that's why he's a first round pick. That guy's very, very going to be valuable. But without him, we have to go to uh, Bullard, Ted. First A plus tackler. Very versatile guy. He's one of my favorite guys that I've seen in this draft. I was going to put him on the corner group last week, and I thought, nah, he's, he's a safety. 4-4-7, four, four, Ted. 5-10, 197. I don't know. 5-10 corners aren't very popular, but I got him number one because I think he's the best all-around corner. When you mentioned tackling and covering, I got him as an A-plus cover guy, B-plus tackler, and run support. Is, he's pretty average in run support, but uh, he still gets the job done. He's a very, very good player. Secondly, I got the kid from Minnesota. Tyler Newbin, yeah, that's a kid a lot of people like. He's a solid player. The speed doesn't matter. He doesn't have good overall deep speed, but I look at the 40-yard dash thing for wide receivers and corners. I don't look at 40-yard dash times, Chris, for safeties. I don't carry as much weight into the 40-yard dash for a safety as I do a corner. Yeah, safety seems to be more about positioning right. and knowledge of where you need to go as opposed to just straight line speed like the, the corner position is. 53 tackles and five picks. A lot of experience, Ted. 47 games, 2,400 snaps. All-time pick leader in gopher history, Ted, with 13. How about that? Wow. Really good at reading the defense. You can tell players on the field, they read the defense if they're really confident in their position. I think he's got, I guess you call that football IQ, but Tyler Newbin could easily probably have been my number one on my board, too. Get to the Viking guys. Who we got? My first Viking guy is Cole Bishop. 6'2", 205. I love the size. I think Cole Bishop is Hitman 2.0. He even looks like Hitman. 6'2", 205. I gave him a C grade all the way across the board. Run defense and tackling. One thing I like about him, he runs a 4'4", so he does have the good speed. The guy's a tremendous blitzer. And I think that you have to have a knack for blitzing like Harrison Smith has 
This guy has strong safety written all over him, man. And I think he would be a good replacement. I don't know if he's going to be available. 60 tackles, three sacks. Just a solid safety. There's not much he does wrong. I have Green, Green, Renardo Green from Florida State. 41 tackles, 13 passes defense. How about that? Probably won't play right away. Probably going to invest some time into him, but his potential is so high, he could end up probably being maybe the top two safeties of this class. A defensive coordinator is going to love this guy because he's versatile and you can put him anywhere. I got him as a an A cover guy. And the good thing about Renardo Green is he's a safety slash corner. But he can play both. So he's already got the hybrid learning under his system. He's already deep into that, learning both positions. Ted, I got the guy for Ted right here. Yeah. Trey Taylor from the Air Force. Remember Austin Cutting? Austin <laughs> Dave <laughs> Stefano wanted Austin God. Cutting. Dave still pulls out the... Uh... <laughs> The hand lotion when he talks about Austin. I like this dude. A lot of people have him, to be honest, they have him a sixth or seventh round guy. I got him higher than that, man. I love this dude. Okay. Why is that? Cousin of Ed Reed. Is he really? His only problem on tape, you see, is that he's over aggressive on a lot of plays and it gets him out of position. You'd rather have a guy that's over aggressive than a guy that's late to the play for a safety. 74 tackles and three picks with Air Force. I got him as a C tackler. He needs to work on his run defense. He's a cover guy. Got him graded as a B. He entered Air Force as a running back, switched it up, went to safety, and thrived there since. Uh, I will say that when he leaves Air Force, he's going to be a lieutenant, which increases his propensity for getting lost uh, by approximately 75%. So uh, that's something they're going to have to coach out of him as well, uh, said the enlisted guy. I like Trey Taylor. 36 games, good experience. Here's what he's done in 36 games, Ted. 11 tackles for loss, 6 interceptions, 14 passes defense, and 205 tackles. His draft stock seems to be around the 6th round. That might be a guy we could snag and steal later. And then uh, my last guy in Viking Watch is great Bo Braid. 6 foot 203. Rest run defender I got at safety in this draft. He's number 1. Doesn't have the top end speed, but I like him because you put him up there at the line and, and control the run. He's such a great run defender that you work off that for the coverage stuff. And I think Flores would be able to thrive with a guy like that. That's my last guy in the Viking list. The rest are all developmental. Drew Bunning? Yeah. I have a little bit of a bone to pick with you after looking at your list. <laughs> Go ahead. I think you have one glaring omission. Oh, proctologist? Proctor? Yeah. <laughs> Proctor is number 17 on my list, Ted. It's just that the other guys edged him out a little bit flashier on tape. I do like Proctor, though, because he's a leader back there for Ohio State. It seems like he's one of the brainiacs back there on the defense. Smart player, maybe could be a little bit more physical, but tell me about Proctor. Sell him on me, Ted. This is why I think Josh Proctor should be in your top 15. Josh Proctor, Ohio State safety. So it has nothing to do with Ohio State, right? Well, he's one of the few guys I know really well, and I kind of studied up on him, so I'm going to waste about five minutes of your time that you're never going to ever get it back. I think he's a guy that, as a late-round pick, could be a steal for the Vikings. I look at him as a poor man's Josh Patelis. You look at all the different positions Josh Patelis played for the Vikings. Josh Proctor played three or four positions for Ohio State. He played both safety positions. He played nickel. I think he played on the outside. I think Flores looks at guys like that, that you can move around on defense and play them in a lot of different positions. And Flores loves guys like that. Before Flores got to Minnesota, Metellus was kind of a, I don't want to say a bad player because he wasn't a bad player. It was just that he was almost exclusively a special team. Right. Ed Donatel didn't know what the hell to do with anybody he had. No. no. And Brian Flores is kind of like a Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein. He looks at all these guys and thinks of, you know, insane ways to use everybody. And guys like Josh Proctor, he looks at it and he's like, I, I could use this guy here. I could use this guy there. And then if I use that guy there, I can put Metellus there. And then I could put I could put Pace there. And I could do this here. And I could put that guy there. And he comes up with these evil concoctions. And the quarterback will get to the line of scrimmage. And all of a sudden, you're going to see Josh Proctor lined up at nose. And the quarterback is going to go, what in God's name am I looking at? And he's going to have to call timeout. And it's kind of an extreme example. But those kind of players are the kind of guys that Brian Flores loves. And when it gets to the 
you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round. I'm not going to say Brian Flores is going to be standing on the table for Josh Proctor, but he's going to be standing on the table for guys like Josh Proctor. Later round guys that can play three, four, or five positions, and he can say, look, give me guys like this because, man, I can put them in my defense and I can come up with a bunch of different schemes and variations and nobody's going to know what the hell I'm going to do and I'm going to confuse the hell out of everybody just like he did for about 13 or 14 weeks last year until you know the offense just collapsed and the defense just spent too much time on the field and, and they just got too tired. I think a guy like Josh Proctor, hopefully it would be Josh Proctor, but a guy like him would be very enticing for Brian Flores to be, he, he would be a guy Brian Flores would want to draft. I'm putting Proctor on the Viking watch after that. All right, with that, that wraps up our positional analysis for the offseason. Drew, thanks again for all the hard work you put in and, and researching all these players and all these different position groups. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We're going to come back oh. with trivia. Oh. Trivia's back, baby. Oh. <laughs> Time now for Fact or Fiction here on SportsCenter, NFL Draft Style. Joined by our gurus, Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper Jr. Todd, let's start with you. Fact or Fiction, Jarvis Jones is a top 10 pick. I'm going to go fiction here. Listen, I, I love his production like everybody does, but I wonder about the scheme fit. When he's six foot two, he's 248 pounds. Why is Mel disagreeing? He's six foot two, he's 248 pounds. You look at him as a player, he can come off the edge. Todd, he does some Todd, certain Todd, things. Todd, the- Todd, 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 Todd. When you take a look at his production, the SEC is an outside linebacker playing through an injury two successive years, putting up incredible numbers, tremendous motor, can beat you a variety of ways. I think this is a guy to me, Todd, deserves to be a top 10 pick. Well, there you have it. Two of the best football minds in the business, yet somehow they can't agree on anything. Not quite sure how that's possible. Still ahead here on ESPN, a brand new 30 for 30 film. New York Jets 2012 the butt fumble and we're clear good job guys great stuff nothing like a hot cup of coffee oh todd i have to disagree with you todd i take a look at a standard cup of hot joe that compared to the dynamic hard hitting electric cold beverage like an ice mocha frappuccino out seattle the starbucks franchise gives you a bigger burst cooler temperature no need to blow on it because this one's ready to drink now mocha frappuccino extra ice firmly entrenched to the number one position on my big menu board Let's take a look at my mock coffee drink draft. Uh, what, what's going on? Where did that graphic come from? Hey, Mel, I bet you didn't think of this. What about the ice in your coffee? Ah, I thought about that. Huge upside on the extra ice. Adds 30, 40 minutes to your lifespan, your delicious frozen beverage. Risk is in the hot coffee like mouth burn, hot spill. For my money, if I had to spill coffee in my lap, I'm taking iced coffee over a hot one that could leave you potentially scarred for life. Cold coffee, flying under the radar, no lap injuries, safe bet. You'd be hard pressed to tell me otherwise. All right. Welcome back to Trivia. Hi, Ruby. Hi. <laughs> you know what this is re- reminds me of right now in draft day? We're sunny. Looks at those three assistant coaches. I'm trying really hard not to lose my shit <laughs> on all three of you. <laughs> well, you're, you're making, making it very hard. hard. <laughs> when they're talking about how many chicks Bo gets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's got a website about it. <laughs> Find me something. Okay, so we have a couple of themes, draft day and safeties, and then we have two categories full of my pictures. Oh, cool. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. We'll go ahead and start with safeties. This is a thing that Drew usually does. You're going to see a year around in a college, and you tell me which safety the Vikings drafted. Okay. All righty, here we go for 100. 2000, fourth round, Minnesota. Tyrone Carter. Is that Tyrone Carter? Yep. yep. Drew got it before got I that did. one. Damn it. All right, for 200. 2008, second round, Arkansas State. Tyrell Johnson. Tyrell Johnson. Oh, my God. I don't know who got that. Oh, uh, Ted, Ted got that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chris was first on that one. He might have got it first, but we're all in agreement. That guy was a bust. He yeah. was. He was terrible. Okay, for 300. 2019, sixth round, Wyoming. Uh, Marcus Epps. Yeah. Marcus Epps. Yes. Job. What the freak? As Michael Scott would say, <laughs> yes. Okay. 400. 2020, seventh round, Mississippi State. Oh. Damn it. I should know this. Brian Cole. True. <laughs> yeah. True got that's it. That's exactly who it was. He didn't even make it through camp. 
Okay, over to draft day suits. So you're going to see a picture of, it doesn't have to be a Viking, it could be anybody, of crazy suits that were worn on draft days. And you have to tell me who the player is. <laughs> oh, great. All right. All right, for 100, who is this? Cam Newton. No. Way too conservative for Cam Newton. Got to be one of the first rounders. Yeah. I don't know. No? No idea. That was Lamar Jackson. Oh. Lamar. Yeah. Nice. All right, for 200. Who is this? Uh, Patrick Mahomes. I believe that's 2023. Oh. Uh, is that Jordan Addison? That is Jordan yeah, Addison. Yeah, yes. Right. Nice. <laughs> Why do I know this? I have no oh, idea. God. He kicks our ass. He, he can't play <laughs> Yeah, he every time. Our ass, he does. All right. For 300, who is this? Jalen Hurt. No. Or whatever his name is. Uh, that looks like like the candy man. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Davis Jr.? I don't think he got drafted. In... I don't know who that is. I no? No idea. That was Kyler oh, Murray. I knew it was a quarterback. If you got that from Baby Gap. Um, <laughs> yeah. oh. All right. For 400, you guys suck at this category. We sure do. Who is this? Janet Jackson. Um, um, Ezekiel Elliott. Yes. I, I can tell after. Is it right? Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, after, after extensive research, I can tell you that is not Janet Jackson. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. These are um, my pictures. So it doesn't have to be a Viking. It could be anybody in any time frame. You just have to name All the right. player. Famous for something. They did dumb, probably. All right. Here we go for 100. Name the player. Oh, that's Manti Teo. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> This is by this is by far the best category in trivia. I know it doesn't. I know it doesn't translate to the audio podcast, but it's entertaining for us, so that's really what matters. <laughs> All right, for two hundred, name the player. Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson. <laughs> oh. Yes. Good job. Yep, Chris is well. Drew, actually, you're not that far behind. All right, for three hundred, name the player. Donovan McNabb. Yes. God. Damn. He gets it before I've even read the thing. <laughs> All right. Name the player for 400. Right. Uh, Eli Manning. <laughs> yes. Eli yeah, Manning. Absolutely. I'm on the board, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I'm not going to get shut out. I'm just afraid of that. Okay. Here we go. Back up to 100. Name the player. Uh. I love the drawings Ruby does. Oh, um, look at her drawing. That's awesome. Marshawn Lynch. Yes. <laughs> uh, that was an excellent drawing, man. It was. But he just goes, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, for 200, name the player. Oh. Paul Joseph. No. George, that guy from the Parliament Band. What's his name? George. George Clinton? Yeah. <laughs> Close. Um,. Uh, Hold on. Oh, Clinton Portis. Yes. Oh, Kid Bro Sweets. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Kid Bro. That was a clue. Okay. So, two left. 300. Name the player. Or people, actually. 99 NFL draft. Uh, 1999, that says? Is that Pac Man Joe? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Look at the details. Yeah. I see the hair. I see the cigarettes. I, I assume those are cigarettes. I don't know. No? I don't know who it is, Rip. I have no idea on this okay, one. I'm going to give you a hint. It's a player and a coach. They're smoking blunts together? Yep. Oh, um, uh, Mike Dicka and um, Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Ted, Ted can have that one. He, he, he yeah, that, Ted can funny. have the whole game for getting that one. <laughs> yeah. That's tremendous. All right, here we go. Here's the last one. Name the player. Kyler Murray. Oh, Kyler Murray. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I got one. Wait, 
Wait, who got that? I think I think Drew beat me to it by by just a fraction of a second. All right, it doesn't matter because Chris won anyway. Yeah. All right, you guys, thank you for playing. All right, folks, that'll wrap up episode 131, our last show before the NFL draft, which is just going off in a few days. We will be on live about 6:30 on Thursday night on our YouTube channel right here. It'll be me, Chris, Drew, Ruby will be on in the background. We'll be giving away that official 2024 NFL draft hat that the Vikings first round pick will be worn when they come out on stage and get the number one jersey. Yep, right there. Absolutely. There will be no studio show next week. We're going to do another live show next Monday to recap the NFL draft. You'll get our thoughts, opinions, and searing hot takes on that. Guys, I love doing the show with you. You make me uh you make me laugh. You make me smarter every week. For everyone, thanks for joining. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for liking. I really appreciate it. I'll try to do better the next time. Chris, say goodnight. Ben Drew, take us home, brother. Man, the next time we get together, it's going to be draft night, kids. It's going to be uh, it's going to be something to get excited for. This is shaping up to be the most interesting first round the Vikings have had in a very long time, no matter which direction it goes in. And we are all going to be here for it, and it's going to be awesome. So I am looking forward to it. Everybody join us Thursday. It's going to be crazy. We want to hear your takes, and we want to hear you guys stress out on round one. It's going to be so much fun. I'm looking forward to it. We got prizes to give away throughout the first round. It's all going to be good. That's all I got for tonight. Episode 131 is in the books. And as we say always, say goodnight, Chris. Good night, Chris. Say goodnight, Ted. Good night, Ted. Pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Pancake eating mother. <laughs> <laughs>